I started doing this job because my parents taught it to me. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by the work the people around me were doing. I watched them closely, and that's how I developed this passion. With its thousands of years of history, Beijing has a very rich culture. Beyond the modern neighborhoods, buried deep in the city's suburbs, a host of small workshops maintain and nurture the ancient traditions and savoir-faire. Here, an hour's drive from the center of Beijing, is produced an art form prized by the Chinese and collectors all over the world. Red lacquering, a technique invented in 4th century China. Zi Xinyong is one of the few remaining masters of this ancient technique. I'm working on a piece called the lychee box. All over the surface, I'm carving patterns inspired by this fruit. Here, I have drawn a pattern of lychee leaves on the box. Now, I have to do the carving. When it's finished, we will have a box in which can be kept jewelry or precious objects. This is a beautiful piece. Here, we are at a very special stage called red etching. It is quite complex and meticulous. First, I must apply several coats of lacquer. Once the lacquer is thick enough, we can begin to carve. When I make something, it has to be done calmly. You cannot hurry. It's all about patience. There, almost finished. You can see all the beauty of the carving. It's a truly meticulous job. You see these lychees and the rounded leaves? In China, round and square shapes each have their own significance. We talk about a round heaven and a square earth. Here on the box, we find this notion of roundness. I draw my inspiration from Chinese civilization. I often use ancient patterns. Between the 5th and the 8th centuries, China was very prosperous, very rich. In fact, stoutness was synonymous with beauty. This piece is kind of a nod to that period. Here's how I make the lacquer. Basically, it's resin harvested from a lacquer tree. It's a rather rare resin. A lacquer tree can produce only 25 to 28 kilos per year. To transform this resin into red lacquer, I must add a mineral called cinnabar. So I mix cinnabar with the resin to get the perfect red lacquer. You see, I start painting at the bottom and work my way upwards. Only one coat can be applied per day. It will take more than 100 layers of lacquer, that's to say 100 days of painting, before I can start carving. 
The painting alone takes between eight and nine months. Then comes the carving, producing the pattern, polishing, varnishing. In fact, each piece takes a year to complete. There is a Chinese proverb that says, the longer the time spent, the more beautiful the piece. Zixing Yong learned the art of lacquering from his father. Ever since, he's remained in the family workshop where he grew up. I started doing this job because my parents taught it to me. When I was a kid, I was fascinated by the work the people around me were doing. I watched them closely, and that's how I developed this passion. I was only 11 years old when I began carving lacquer. At the time, in our production team, I learned from old craftsmen. My apprenticeship lasted almost 30 years. Lacquer is a material that is inextricably linked to Chinese civilization. In China, traces of completely lacquered objects dating back over 3,000 years have been found. The art of lacquering subsequently spread throughout Southeast Asia. Today, red lacquering has become part of China's heritage. I am now regarded as a master who can pass on this knowledge. It is my job to pass on this technique and prepare the next generation. It is the final goal of my life. In one of the oldest areas of Beijing, in the center, close to the Forbidden City, is the Hutong district, home to the drum tower built in the 15th century. has worked at the drum tower for 10 years. This morning, he has donned his drummer costume to reenact an ancient tradition, from the era when drums indicated the time of day to the people of Beijing. The Beijing drum tower was built in the 15th century under the Yuan dynasty. It was used to announce the time of day right up until the 20th century. Back then, the drum rolls were heard and expected by all the residents of Beijing. The tower was also used as an observation post by the army. The tower was built along the capital's central thoroughfare. In the 15th century, the official time was announced every 15 minutes by the sound of drums. It is said that this thoroughfare led directly to the throne of the emperor within the forbidden city itself. The drum tower has red walls with green tiles. In ancient China, most of the buildings were red. It was the color of privilege and status for Chinese families. The emperor's buildings and those used by the government were red. The color of the tiles would vary according to rank. Here, within the tower itself, everything was organized into a strict hierarchy. Since 1911, the drum tower has no longer been used to indicate the time to the residents of Beijing. Today, the drums are only heard on certain important dates in the Chinese calendar or during vacations for tourists. Wow. 
In ancient China, the drums were also used when the army went on the march. The drum is an instrument that evokes optimism, the desire to move forward and surpass oneself. When I play the drum, it feels like going back in time to the period of the Qing dynasty, the last imperial dynasty to have ruled our country. 